a recovery services vault in microsoft azure is a storage entity that is used to manage and protect backup and disaster recovery data it plays a key role in azure's backup and site recovery services in this video we will walk through how to create configure and manage a recovery services vault in azure hello everyone i hope you are all doing well i'm manher and welcome back to msft webcast we can use recovery services vault to store backup data for a variety of azure resources including azure virtual machines as well as sql server databases running within those vms moreover it's capable of backing up your file shared data in azure files with the use of the microsoft azure recovery services agent you also have the option to backup and restore files folders and the system state of an on premises server additionally when integrated with system center data protection manager or azure backup server it allows you to create cloud backups alongside disk backups from your on premises servers in short recovery services vaults makes it easy to organize your backup data while minimizing management overhead A recovery services vault is a logical container in Azure that stores backup data, recovery points and application data. We mainly use it for Azure backup and Azure site recovery. Each vault is created in a specific Azure region. Backup and recovery data are stored in Azure storage managed by the vault. The vault storage replication type determines data durability and cost. Let's go through the steps to create and configure a recovery services vault in Azure. First, we need to log in to the Azure portal. Open your preferred web browser, navigate to portal.azure.com and sign in with your Azure account. Step 1: Create a recovery services vault. In the search bar at the top of the portal, type business continuity center. On the services, select business continuity center. In the left hand menu expand the manage section and then select vaults to create a new vault click on vault in azure we can create two types of vaults recovery services vault and backup vault i'll create another video on the backup vault in the list select recovery services vault and click on continue select the subscription to use if you are a member of only one subscription you see that name If you are not sure which subscription to use, use the default subscription. Multiple choices appear only if your account is associated with more than one Azure subscription. Use an existing resource group or create a new one. For this demo, I have created a resource group named AC Backup hyphen AC zero one to store the recovery services vault. Enter a friendly name to identify the vault. The name must be unique to the Azure subscription. Specify a name that has at least two, but not more than fifty characters. Then select the geographic region for the vault. For you to create a vault to help protect any data source, the vault must be in the same region as the data source. After entering all required values, select Review plus Create to continue. To complete the creation of recovery services vault, click on Create. It can take a while to create the recovery services vault. Wait a few seconds for deployment to complete. After the vault is created, it appears in the list of recovery services vaults. The recovery services vault has been successfully created. Go back to the home page of the Azure portal. Under Azure Services, click on Business Continuity Center. Now click on Vaults. Confirm that the new recovery services vault is listed. If the vault doesn't appear, select refresh. This is how we can create a new recovery services vault in Azure using the Azure portal. Step 2: Manage recovery services vault. Select the recovery services vault you would like to manage. On the overview page, you can configure settings related to backup, enable site recovery or update vault security. There's also an option to delete the recovery services vault. For example, let's modify the storage redundancy setting for this vault. Azure Backup automatically handles storage for the vault. You just need to specify how that storage is replicated. Expand the settings section. 
and then select properties. In properties, on the backup configuration, select update. This page provides options to set storage redundancy and cross-region restore settings for this recovery services vault. Be sure to change the storage replication type for a recovery services vault before configuring any backups in the vault. Once a backup is configured, the option to modify the replication type is disabled. You have three options for the storage replication type. If you are using Azure as a primary backup storage endpoint, continue to use the default geo-redundant storage. If you need data availability without downtime in a region guaranteeing data residency, choose zone redundant storage. If you don't use Azure as a primary backup storage endpoint, choose locally redundant storage to reduce storage cost. Choose the option that best fits your organization's requirement. The cross-region restore option allows you to restore data in a secondary Azure paid region. You can use it to conduct drills for audit or compliance purposes or to recover data in the event of a disaster in the primary region. A vault with only GRS redundancy includes the option to configure the cross-region restore feature. After modifying the settings, click apply to save your changes. Wait for the confirmation notification to appear. Next, let's learn how to enable cross-subscription restore. Cross-subscription restore allows you to restore data from restored points to a different subscription within the same tenant as the source subscription. Cross-subscription restore is currently supported for Azure VM, SQL Server in Azure VM, SAP SE and SAP HANA in Azure VM and Azure Files. To configure cross-subscription restore for the vault, go to your recovery services vault, expand settings, then click on properties. Scroll down, under cross-subscription restore, select update. By default, the cross-subscription restore is enabled. To disable cross-subscription restore, select the second radio button. To permanently disable cross-subscription restore on this vault, select the third option. Select the setting as per your requirement. I'm going to select the first option as I want to enable cross-subscription restore for this vault. After modifying the settings, click update to save your changes. Let me click on cancel. This is how we can configure the properties of recovery services vault. Now let's move to the backup section. Step 3. How to backup an individual Azure VM. Go to the overview tab. Click on backup. Select what you want to backup in this recovery services vault. Select the location where your workload is hosted. We will keep Azure selected as you want to backup an Azure VM. Click the drop down menu to select what you want to backup. These are the items you can backup in the recovery services vault. From the list, select virtual machine. Click on backup to continue. Now we need to define the backup policy. A backup policy defines the schedule and retention rules for backups of your data. Essentially, it is a set of rules that determines when and how long your data will be backed up as well as how long those backups will be retained for recovery. To keep this video simple, I'll choose the standard policy subtype. The default policy backs up the VM once a day at 9 pm and the daily backups are retained for 30 days. In this policy, instant recovery snapshots are retained for 2 days. I'll create a dedicated video on how to create a custom backup policy to define advanced settings for automating the Azure VM backup. Under Virtual Machines, select Add to choose the virtual machine you want to backup. Select the VM that you want to backup using this policy. Click OK and let the validation check complete. Only VMs in the same region as the vault are eligible to select. You can define additional checks in the backup policy to specify the conditions for including the VMs in the backup. When ready, click on Enable Backup. This action deploys the policy to the vault and the VMs and install the backup extension on the VM agent that runs on the Azure VM. An initial backup runs in accordance with your backup schedule. A VM that's running has the greatest chance for capturing an application consistent recovery point. Even if the VM is turned off, it's backed up. Such a VM is called an offline VM. 
In that case, the recovery point is grass consistent. Explicit outbound connectivity isn't required to allow backup of Azure VM. The deployment has been successfully completed. Click on Go to Resource. Expand protected items, then click on Backup Items. Click on Azure Virtual Machine. You can see the Azure VM AWS VM02 listed under Backup Items. Until the initial backup completes, last backup status shows as warning initial backup pending. This is how we can create, configure, and manage a recovery services vault in Azure. That's all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Azure and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.